New Chris says, yeah, it's very insightful. Thanks for sharing, Dana. Getting started with all this self-knowledge is so hard. Yeah, it is. And I think too, the other challenge with all that is um, realizing that it's a process and it's a lot of trial and error, especially with boundary setting. You know, and hindsight's always 2020. I think just realizing, just being patient with yourself, realizing it's a process, you're learning something new and it just, you know, you're not, we're not going to learn all this overnight. And all we can do is just take the next step and you, you know, you'll keep having clarity as you move down the path. That's kind of how that works. And, and to be compassionate with yourself along the way. It just, it, this stuff kicks up a lot of stuff because the healthier, the more in alignment we get with ourselves. Maria had brought this up a while back. There's definitely a very real time where we, we feel there's this sadness of, oh my God, my life would have been so different had I known this, you know, years ago. And there's this period of grief where you have to kind of mourn the loss of, of what was, but again, I will tell you, I really, I think it's very easy to think that everybody else has this figured out and that somehow we, we don't, I will tell you, I really don't think that the vast majority of people out there have this stuff figured out. I really, really don't. I don't think it's just like a codependent thing. I think this is a people thing because this stuff is not taught and it's not discussed. And, uh, and you will find that the more in alignment you get with yourself and the healthier, you know, when you have that open, honest, sincere, solutions oriented communication, not a lot of people have that. And it's, it freaks a lot of other people out because they're so used to not being honest with themselves over like little things, you know? So they don't know how to handle that. It's just weird. I think the the more in alignment you get, the healthier you get, the Kind of, you know, in many ways, kind of the smaller like your your inner circles become because you just well, you're you're living a life that you love and you just you realize you're like, I do not want chaos and drama and strife and struggle and just you know confusion and crazy making in my inner circles. Like I just want peace in my life and I want to enjoy my life. And you really guard it with the fierceness that that it deserves. It's just, it's part of valuing yourself. So, but it does, it does take practice. I'm continually blown away like by the things that I learn about myself where I'm like, I cannot believe I, I've been doing this for you. I can't even think of an example right now, but like, Oh, well, no, I actually can't, you know, um, got actually I think of quite a few examples, but like saying yes, when I really meant no. And and not realizing how out of tune I was, how dishonest I was being with myself, with my emotions. But I wouldn't even, that sounds even harsher than, it wasn't even, I wasn't tuned in to even pick up on them in that way. So it wasn't even that I was like trying to suppress them. It was just, I, they weren't even on my radar. And so now like it, and again, because I always learn things the hard way, apparently, you know, it took me quite a few times. I mean, it took me gaining like 20 pounds. It took me, you know, having struggling with some like major depression. It took some like extreme circumstances for this stuff to register of, Hey, things are really out of alignment. You've got to get things back. If the, the thing is, I don't think they were ever in alignment. I think it was just, it was kind of this, um, Things were out of alignment just enough to not be on my radar was what it was. So now that I know different, I can start doing different. But, you know, when you have this realization of, oh my gosh, how could I not have noticed that? Like, that's so obvious to me now, you know, and then there's just this, it makes me sad. Like I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, poor Dana, you know, poor Dana, poor Dana that she was going through all of that for a year and that I didn't. Um, like I just wasn't aware of it, you know, it makes me sad. It makes me sad for old me, poor, poor old Dana, <laughs> poor old Dana. That sounds so funny. 
MZ, MZ whimsy falls as I relate to that, Dana, I've been having the same realizations to keep checking with what I want from things. Yeah. So, okay. So one of the, one of the thing, one of the questions in the, this book codependency for dummies is she's talking about, she, like I said, this book is full of, there's all these exercises in there that are fantastic. And, and one of them is really kind of getting in tune with yourself. Like, what do you want? What do you need? And she recommends, you know, starting with your likes and, you know, like my favorite color is blank. My favorite movie is blank. My favorite food is blank. Right. And I vividly remember multiple times filling out questions like that for like security questions for my bank or whatever, and feeling like I was having this like existential crisis because I didn't know. I'm like, I don't know. I like, I like all colors and I kind of like all movies and I don't know, like I like a lot of different foods and I didn't know. And that caused me so much anxiety of like, do other people know these things about themselves and it's just me or like, what's, I don't know. It like really, like really, really threw me for a loop. And so that was another one of those weird little moments of, Hey, there's something kind of off here. And so something else I've been working on over, you know, 2017, 2018 has been having an opinion about things. I think I was so go with the flow for so long for a wide variety of reasons that I really kind of lost myself. And so, you know, taking the time to really think about, okay, yeah. Okay. My favorite food, I would say is probably Indian food. I love it so much. My favorite dessert is probably apple pie and vanilla ice cream. My, you know what I mean? Like getting really clear with this is what I like and, and this is why. That's a, a, a big way that we can start really tuning into this stuff because it's real, I think it's really difficult to, to build on wants and needs if some of the basic stuff isn't there. And of course the stuff can change, right? Like, you know, it doesn't have to be set in stone, but I think it's a good idea of who are you and what are you about and, and what are your likes and what are your dislikes? You know, like, for example, for me, I don't like horror movies. Like I really don't like horror movies. So that would be something. So asking yourself, okay, well, what kind of movies do you like? What kind of movies do you dislike? Because oftentimes I think maybe a lot of people were more in tune with what we don't like than what we do like. So I remember looking around at houses a few years ago and again, having a lot of anxiety because I was like, I, I don't know. Like, I really don't know. But the reality is I, I did know. I had just like, gotten so used to I, it's just not having an opinion about things again, for a wide variety of reasons that I was very out of tune with what I really wanted. Now I know I'm like, you know what? I not a fan of walls. Like, I really would like a house that has a fairly open floor plan. And I like high ceilings and I like lots of windows. And um, those are kind of the basics of things. A fireplace would be very nice. You know, things that, all of that makes my heart smile. If I had a magic wand then money was no option, a, a house on the water somewhere, you know? So going through this book has been very eye-opening. Yes. And Lilith says, you also like certain pens. I sure do. My gel pens, my pilot pens. That was a big, that was a big thing for me to realize. Yes. I love these so much. And that was such a, oh, another thing that I really like, that it's been new in my life, that I totally felt like Beyonce was I ordered off of Amazon. I got an Amazon gift card for Christmas and I ordered these velvet hangers. <laughs> it's like, uh, but, and that my, it, like they're thin, but they're so like your top, so tops like this that have kind of this big neck because they fall, they fall off the hanger and it, makes me so crazy every single time I hang up clothes. Uh, so it, they were like 25 bucks for 50 of them, 50. 
It was not that much money. Total game changer. I I feel so luxurious every time I go to take, I just, I, I feel like Beyonce. I do. So AJ says, I love smelly candles, long, hot bubble baths, playing my guitar and painting, but most of all, hugging my boys and making sure they know that their mommy loves them. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, and, and to like the whole concept of self-care. Oh, there's just so much to all of this. <laughs> like just it's like pulling a string on a sweater. You know, this was another aha moment for me is for years, people would say like your comment about bubble baths brought it to my mind. I don't, I'm like one of the rare girls, I guess out there. I don't, I do not like baths. I get antsy. Like I don't, I just sit in there. Like I, I don't, it kind of gives me anxiety to sit in there. I can't read a book because then the pages get all wet. I can't, should not be trusted with technology within 50 feet of water. You know, like I, I don't, so I have a hard time just sitting there. Um, but I used to think like self-care wise, people would always talk about taking a bath. And so I would do that because <laughs> I was like, okay, people, this is what people do. People relax, they take a bath. And uh, I didn't enjoy it at all. And so it's weird because like now, like, you know, old Dana would do that. New Dana doesn't do that. Like I now know, okay, these are certain things that I enjoy doing. Like certain things for me with, with having to do with self-care might be, you know, giving myself a pedicure or um, going and playing with some animals or taking time to just get lost in a good book or taking time to go get lost. One of my favorite YouTube channels is called Cinema Sins, going and watching a bunch of Cinema Sins or, um, sp you know, spending time with friends or, <sighs> Yeah. Those are probably some of like the top things. Scented candles. I'm a big fan of those. So self-care is such an individual thing, you know, but I think when people first start out doing all of this, if we're so out of tune with ourselves, we're like, I don't know, I guess I'm, sp I'm supposed to go journal or I'm supposed to go take a bubble bath or I'm supposed to go whatever for a walk. But like, if we hate all of those things, you know, or any one of those things, then it's not, it kind of defeats the purpose. So lots of love to you guys. You are not alone. You are not crazy and you really can move forward and heal from this. So take care.